Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jamel, with Canvas Apparel, back with another video. Today, I got a nice little short um, tutorial about using gradients. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to show you guys some things with uh, the gradient uh, tool, and I'm also going to show you a tool that, uh, that you can use to help you uh, uh, complement your colors so it's like a coloring tool uh it's all built into hat so um we're gonna go ahead and get started um so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to new y'all know how my videos no nonsense we're gonna get straight to the point so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to digitize and we're just gonna use a circle shape for this example and I'm also going to stitch this out, okay? Um, so we're going to make a circle. I think I can double click it. All right, now we have a circle. Uh, let's center that circle. All right, it's centered. So when you want to use the gradient tool, um, you can only use the gradient tool on a fill stitch you can't use the gradient tool on a uh satin stitch uh i think so um i've i've tried it on a satin stitch it didn't work for me so um unless somebody know different let me know in the comment section but you can use the gradient effect tool with a uh to time me a fill stitch all right so the first thing i want to show you guys is uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this circle so now we're going to have two so i want to show you this color palette that's built in to hatch embroidery three so what you're going to do is you're going to come up to customize design and you want to go to color wheel color wheel and customize design go to your color wheel and that's first you need to select both color you need to select both objects all right Click shift, then go to your color wheel. So we're going to select both objects and we want to put it on complementary colors. Okay. Matter of fact, let me change one of the colors to one of them. See if that works. Then we're going to select both of them. All right. So make sure that each object is a different color so it can work. All right. So once you have two of your objects and they're all different colors, you're going to go to color wheel and you're going to see the two colors up here at the top. All right. So you have harmonious, you have the complementary, you have the triad, monochromatic and stuff like that. So we're going to do complementary, complementary colors. And because when I'm doing this gradient, I want the, the, the colors to kind of comp complement each other. I want to, you know, kind of match. So um, what you're going to do is you have your two nodes. Your base color is red. So we're going to move this red. And I want to move. You see the base color changes to purple. Your complementary color is green. So I want to do that color, purple and green. All right. So we're going to click OK. And these are our two complementary colors that we're going to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete one of these. All right. Because I have my two complementary colors that came up down here at the bottom. All right. So matter of fact, let's put it back and let's discard the rest of them. So now we have our only our two colors that we need, the complementary colors. All right. So I'm going to delete the purple. And what you what you want to do now is we're going to go down to edit objects, I think. And we're going to click on this, our object. And you want to go to color, create color blend and edit objects. You want to click that. And this is how we're going to create our gradients. OK, now the bottom layer. Um. Yeah, the bottom layer is the layer that you want to stay even, all right? The bottom layer, you want that layer to stay even. The top layer, 
You can use profile two, profile one, any one of these profile, but we want that bottom layer to stay even. So on the top layer, we're gonna do profile one. And sometimes when you click it, it might go back. So make sure it's it's selected on even on the bottom layer and the top layer. We're gonna use profile number two. Um we're going to come back to the minimum spacing. We're just going to see how this look. I want y'all to see how it look. All right. So once you have this part done, you're going to press OK. All right. So now if you're looking at the screen, we have a gradient effect going on. OK. This is our bottom layer and our top layer. OK. All right. So when you do that, when you press OK, uh, hatch is on. It's going to automatically group the the object. So to ungroup them, you want to right click, select ungroup. And the only layer we really want to work with is the bottom layer, the layer that's going on top, because that's going to make uh, the gradient uh, effect. So if I hide it, you can see that this top layer is the full effect. You have the full stitch out going all the way across. All right. So if I unhide all and hide this one, you have a gradient effect going, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the settings of the accordion effect. I think that's what Hatch calls it. I know uh, Wilcom calls it accordion. So we're gonna go to effects and we wanna press our second one. So we're gonna, mess with the gradient fill effect, all right? Which I'm already messing with by mistake, <laughs> all right? So um, let's redo. All right, so we have our gradient fill effects right here. So let's hide this and let's duplicate ungroup again. So let's hide the first one. I selected. So you have your minimum spacing and you have max spacing. I think minimum spacing is the spacing at the top up here. Your minimum spacing is at the top and your max spacing is how it's fading out. Okay. The one at the bottom. So you have your Spacing at the top. This is your top spacing, and this is your bottom spacing right here as it's fading out. So if I bring that back in, that you're gonna get more at the bottom down here, okay? You're gonna get more, you know, it's gonna fill in more, decreasing your gradient effect, okay? But you're still gonna have a gradient effect. So now that y'all see that, we're gonna turn on all our layers and we're gonna play with this part right here to see what we want our gradient to look like, okay? So we're gonna leave this like that. And I usually try to do, let's see, 2.0, uh, let me see, let me think of one, let's do 1.0 millimeters and now you have a nice gradient effect you want this the top part to be a, more than the bottom okay so if i move up to like 230 then you know you can see how it's kind of fading in to the purple so if i turn this purple off you can see how it's it's uh you get a almost a full effect up here, then it fades out and then starts to reveal that purple in the background. Okay, so that's basically how gradient works. And when you see like uh designs with a gradient feel, a uh, gradient effect, this is uh mostly how it's done, but you know, they, they tweak it a little bit to refine it how they want it to look, okay? So um, let's go back to one. 
And let's bring this up to four. Let's see. I don't like that. So we're going to leave it about two millimeters to one. Okay. Nice gradient feel. Now I want to show y'all another, um, another little tool on here that can increase the creativity of your gradient feel. Um, and that is called the Florentine effect. Now with the Florentine effect, uh, usually if I use the Florentine effect, I'm using it on like, uh, if I do like, let's say if I, uh, digitize a horse and I want the hair on the back of the horse to look like it's flowing and I want the tail on the back of the horse to look like it's flowing. I use the Florentine effect. So let's cut this layer off and I'm going to show you what that is, how it looks. I'm going to hide that. Select that object and what you want to do is in effects, you want to tick the Florentine effect. Now, if you zoom in, you see, you see that it has like a wave going like that. Okay. It has a wave on it. So what you can do, you can edit that wave to how you want to edit it, but the machine has to be able to stitch it out. If the machine can't stitch it out, the software is going to reset it. So let me show you that. Press the H key. And these, this is your angle point right here. You see how it's going like that? Now, if I move this around to where it can't, you know, where it's not right, if I add a point and do something real crazy that the, the, the software I know the machine won't be able to do, it's going to reset it to the, the factory point okay so this is what we're going to do we're going to add a point i want to bring this down and also people use this for water effects so if you have some water and you're digitizing you can make your water look like it has a, a moving effect a flowing effect on it okay so this is how this is how people do these uh effects that you see and uh they're digitizing uh some of the designs you see all right it's not no secret you just got to you just got to watch a lot of digitizing and you'll see what people are using so um so now we have this current like current like effect going Okay, it's like a like a S, like a little small S. All right, so we're gonna leave that like that, and then we're gonna turn this uh object on, unhide all. We're gonna add that same effect to this. So just to make it, just to give it a little more flavor or whatever to it, that's if that's what you want to call it. It's a little bit more flex. So we're gonna add the Florentine effect to this one, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the same points like we have on the other one. Give it a flowing effect. You see, now, now you see what your gradient is doing now. Gradient has a, the gradient has a flow to it. So it's gonna look pretty cool. And in my opinion, it looks pretty cool when you stitch it out. So now if you look at it, everything is going like this, even the gradient, okay? so. Let's do another effect on it. And you can put another effect on this. Let's, let's do something crazy. And we're going to stitch this out. See how it looks. Let's do something crazy. Let's go up to the hand stitch effect. So we're going to add a hand stitch effect to both. And now we got, we got something that looks not like a machine, not so uniform like a machine did it, okay? It looks like somebody kind of hand-stitched it, you know? So this is how it's going to look, hopefully, when we stitch it out. We're going to take it over there to my Happy Japan 12-needle Voyager, and we're going to stitch this out. So um, this is how you get these different effects that you see, and 
and embroidery, like for people who like to purchase designs or you see those high detail designs, these are the type of tools that are being used to create those those designs, especially like designs with the sun in the background. And you see it uh, going from uh, a bright yellow to uh, a orange or a uh, a orange to a yellow. This is how they do it. They use a gradient, uh, create a color blend effect depending on what software you're using. Okay, I know, excuse me, Hatch Embroidery does it and Wellcom Embroidery Studio has this feature. I'm not sure about uh, other softwares. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the machine, we're going to stitch it out, and we're going to see how it looks. All right? So let's go to the machine. I'll meet you there. All right, y'all. So now we're going to use the five by five mighty hoop and we're going to take our mighty hoop. We're going to use two pieces of stabilizer. So this is just like one piece of stabilizer. Fold it together like that. We're going to put that on there. We got our fabric. It's a regular black piece of fabric, cotton fabric. And we're going to lay that down. We're going to the top of the hoop, and then we're going to put it on there like that. Get some of the wrinkles out. You don't want it to be too tight. You just want it to be just right, but not too tight. Sounds like a, a rap song. Right? Damn, I was rhyming. Get that drum effect, you know. And then we're going to head over to the machine. All right, so we have the Happy Japan machine. Uh, it's a 12 needle Voyager. So what I need to do first is I need to put my five by five mighty hoop setting five by five mighty hoop. We got it set. We're going to make sure that fits in those red lines. So on these machines, when you set up your, your hoops, because these mighty hoops don't, uh, come preset in the machine. You can go to a happy Japan website. And you can download the file and uh, download the file onto your machine. And it'll put the settings for the Mighty Hoop in there for you. So you want to make sure it's inside that red line right there. Okay. If it's outside that line, you're going to have issues. That's what you don't want. Okay. So we're going to press home because we got our hoop in there. We're going to pick our color, which is going to be purple, then green. Okay. And make sure. I have those two colors. I do have those two colors. The first color is going to be number eight. Second color is going to be number six. Right? Go back to home. And the travel line, I think, is in number six, which I should have took that out. But we're not going to worry about it. This is just for demonstration. Um, so once we got our image on there, you see it's going to take 16 minutes to stitch it out. We're going to take our hoop. Take our mighty hoop. We're going to put it in there. And I know I got enough bobbin thread because it shows me there. I'll put this on there like so. What you always want to do for people who don't have a... Uh, multi-needle embroidery machine, you always want to trace out your design. Press that. Press that. It's going to trace out your design. You just want to make sure it's not going to hit the edge of the hoop. That's all we're making sure of. We're making sure that it's not going to hit this hoop. If you hit this hoop, you can ruin your machine. All right? So once that finishes, we can go ahead and start the embroidery process it's gonna take about 16 minutes i may speed it up in some in some spots i may not so uh y'all enjoy because i don't think y'all ever seen me run my machine so we're just gonna let it stitch out all right so i'm gonna press the start button and i'm gonna let y'all watch the happy japan all right
All right, y'all, that's it. It is done. So we're going to take this out. Let's back this up a little bit. Let's take it out. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. All right. So this is how it looks. I don't know if the camera is going to do the gradient any justice. Let's take that out. There we go. Take some of that light off a little bit. So we have that gradient look right there. So that's how it's going to look, y'all. Let's go over to the computer. And let's look at the computer version and my version together. All right. I would say it looks good. Almost like the computer. It looks almost exactly like the computer version. What y'all think? Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think. But this is how you get the gradient effects. Of course, you want to go in the settings and play with the settings and stuff like that. Okay? You want to go in the settings, you set it up, you get your gradients and stuff how you want them to look. But I think it, I think it looks pretty close. You can see the waviness all through the design, just like you see it on the computer. All right. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. That's how you do uh, gradients. Just a little quick rundown on how to do it. Uh, some of the features that's in Hatch Embroidery Digitizer 3, Gradient, Florentine, you know, like some of these designs that you might go and see on Etsy and like, like go check out some designs on Etsy and look at these highly detailed designs and you see gradients and you see stuff flowing and stuff like that. This, this is how you create those effects. Some people create it, uh, you know, manually, but you know, there's, uh, <clears throat> buttons and stuff and different things you can press within side of hash to get certain, uh, looks within your embroidery. Okay. So, um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Please hit that thumbs up button. That really helps out the channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Share the video to other people you know that may be getting into embroidery or may want to learn how to digitize and do something crazy with their artwork. So um, these are some of the tools that I use, especially when I'm doing flower, uh, floral, uh, digitizing work. These are some of the tools that I use because a lot of floral uh pictures you got a lot of gradients and floral pictures from those light greens to dark greens and, and stuff like that so this is how you get those effects so i hope y'all got something out of the video um make sure don't forget like subscribe hit that notification bell every time i upload a new video you get a notification and i'm gonna see y'all on the next video i'm out of here peace out <laughs>